All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. Truly appreciate it. Happy New Year to all. Happy 2023. We're back at it uh, finally with a new video for FSD beta uh, in 10.69.25.1, which is probably the wide release that everybody has. And we're going to take it for a quick spin. I'll activate here. And we're also going to talk about some topics. You guys said you wanted to hear about our take or my take on certain topics um, of interest when it comes to Tesla. So I'll go ahead and do that as we do this drive. So this particular drive, we're going to talk about uh, the removal of radar and ultrasonic sensors and whether or not uh, it's a good idea for Elon and team to do that. OK, so today is a very uh, pretty decent, actually not very, but decent fog day. Our turn to go. Good job. Decent fog day uh, and see how the car handles this. I've seen this. I've seen a video online about a multi-car pileup um, somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but the idea was that it was very foggy and people who were driving couldn't see through the fog and they wound up just keep crashing into this pileup over and over again. And so that's a scenario where uh, FSD beta, if there was someone was using it, would definitely benefit from radar, long range radar. Um, and even to some extent, ultrasonic sensors, depending on what the condition is. And I know that Tesla has been removing these features uh, for a while now. I'm going to get ready to take over because they didn't fix the speed limit here uh, once we get into this little uh, park area. But um, Tesla has been trying to remove sensors. And I think the, the, the impetus for that is based on. Let me get down. Let me get down. Let me get down. Here we go. Let's go to 25 here. The impetus of that is based on, uh, you know, the supply shortages slowing down a little bit unnecessarily here. But again, it's pretty decent fog cars coming. I kind of sense that, which is pretty good. Uh, but from a cost perspective and from a supply chain perspective, I think that was the reasoning and rationale behind removing some of the complex components that uh, require them to go to third parties and not be vertically integrated. Tesla has been a, done a pretty good job of trying to keep everything in house with Tesla in terms of the components that it makes. But I think that the ultrasonic sensors and the radars are components that they just don't have in house and therefore they're reliant on third parties to be able to supply them with uh, those features, those 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 uh, those components. Person is here. Dense fog. Does the camera see it? Let's see. Foot hovering. It does see it. Visualizes it goes around. Very good. Good job. But I think that's the impetus there. Um, I don't think that there's any sound reason why you wouldn't want the redundancy of ultrasonic sensors or long range radar as a backup to the cameras. Right. So the cameras um, can see everything, but can they see through fog? I don't think they can see through fog. Can they see through snow? I don't think they can see through snow. And so you rely on that feedback, the extra redundancy of, hey, is an object there? Is a person there? Is a car there? in dense fog like this, where in some cases this is, you know, a common uh, weather uh, condition for some places. So you want to definitely have that rather than not, I think. Um, and as you think about other uh, other companies, they want to use uh, LIDAR. That's a great sensor as well, uh, but it also comes with its complications. It also provides some noise as well. Um, it's not reliable. Another person coming up. Let's see. Does the car see it? And how soon do they see it? They see it. They see him. He moves over for us. Very good. But again, that's that's really what I think it is. I think it's a cost cutting exercise, um, a dependency uh, situation where Tesla's not trying to be dependent on other, too many third party providers for things, uh, something that can cause them issues with delivering cars or building cars. Uh, and I now I see that they're trying to go flip flop and go back to keeping the radar and the uh, and the um, at least the ultrasonic sensors back. They took some ultrasonic sensors off some Model 3s, slows down significantly here. Again, there could be confusion or noise based on it trying to interpret and see through fog. Again, this is not a good scenario where, you know, effectively you're driving through fog and the car's a little bit hesitant. Phantom braking all of a sudden. Again, I'm not doing anything. Staying in the middle of the road, I'll give it some accelerator, but it's not trying to move. And maybe because we're at our destination, potentially. But OK, zero feet, I'll, I'll, I'll chalk it up to us being at our, our destination. I'll end here and then I will edit trip. And then I'll go here and go here and then I will continue.
and see what happens. So we can't re-engage right here, but let me get to a little road-like area and see what happens here. Let's see if I can get here and re-engage. Okay, a little bit of bugginess happening. No cameras right now. No nothing right now. So maybe a little bit of a bug here. Okay, there we go. Cameras are back. Maybe a little bit of a soft reboot there. No visualization yet, just the car. So interesting here, uh, just the scenario that we're in right now where the car sort of did a little bit of a soft reboot. Cameras went black. You still drive, totally fine to drive the car. Uh, but FSD beta has not rebooted. So maybe FSD beta has rebooted and that was causing the issues because I don't see the visualizations here just yet. Goes black again. So maybe a little bit of an issue here. I'm gonna pull over into the next place that I can and see if we can't restart this. And as I do this, I'm gonna continue the conversation again, just a cost cutting exercise in my opinion as the reason why FSD beta, excuse me, is the reason why uh, Tesla is choosing to like forego those sensors or those sensor suites. Okay, here we go, we're back at it. Let's back up, FSD beta, a little bit of a reboot. Just loop around. Excellent visualization of the parking situation here. I'm going to pull out of here because uh, it doesn't want to make this left. And that's the case. Sometimes the map data is a little bit off. Uh, it doesn't want to make this left. It wants to go up and do a little bit of a U-turn, which is not the right maneuver here. So I'll jump back out of here. But yeah, cost cutting exercise in terms of, um, you know, wanting to not be dependent on, on providers and wanting to maybe lower the cost of the car as a result of that. I don't see how that would be a significant cost because it's so inexpensive, but that's my theory. Uh, but I think it's absolutely necessary to have radar and backup redundancy for these cameras because these cameras can be covered, they could malfunction. And when the, when the car has cameras that are blinded by the sun or malfunctioning somehow, autopilot and auto lane change is just unavailable. It's just unavailable. It doesn't, like, there's no backup. There's no redundancy. I know the FSD computer has redundancy, but there's no redundancy when it comes to, um, you know, uh, the cameras, right? So if the camera goes down, one camera goes down, except for the front one, because it has multiple cameras, but if any of the side cameras go down, uh, it just becomes unavailable, okay? You can't make a right-hand turn if the right repeater is down or if the right pillar camera is down or blinded or blocked. Um, you just can't do it. So redundancy would be, hey, if one of those cameras goes down, let's rely on ultrasonic sensors for close proximity objects. Let's rely on the radar to show us some things um, that may not be visible there, but just to provide an extra layer of redundancy. So I think that's really what, what it comes down to uh, for the radar and the ultrasonic sensors. Person next to me is extremely close, as you can see, drinking coffee, not paying attention, not good. FSD beta is doing a better job than that person. Wide turn. Good job. Watch the curb. A little wider for my than my than I would like. As you see me touch the yoke, um, would like it to be a little bit tighter, but that's okay. Still doing good so far. Uh, this build, FSD beta 10.69.25.1 is sort of a bug fix. 69.25 was pretty buggy. It was just, for my, in my opinion, it was just, it was just to get the holiday release software out and get the FSD beta people up to parity with what everybody else had, which is great and much appreciated. But the FSD beta build was pretty broken. Uh, this one seems to be resolved somewhat, aside from some of the phantom breaking. But again, I can attribute that to the uh, lack of visibility now. Lack of visibility could be the issue. Okay, but so far so good. Makes the lane change nice and easy. But again, really hard to see, you know, 50, 100 feet down the road. And then it starts to clear up a bit as you get through it. Another lane change. Very good. But I think that's uh, that's Tesla's challenge in general um, is just being able to manage supply chain, manage the manufacturing process um, as a means to as a means to basically keep everything in house 
maximize their profits, increase their output and productivity, and not be reliant on any third party uh, providers to slow them down if they have a supply chain issue. That was the impetus for having their own batteries and building their own batteries, building them in their own factory. Uh, and fun fact, for those that don't know, the Gigafactory, when they build the batteries, uh, Panasonic is technically building them and then they sell them to Tesla at a certain point. So there is literally a line in the factory that when batteries pass from over that line, it goes from ownership from Panasonic to Tesla, which is kind of funny. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case, but when it opened in the grand opening, that was the case. It was pretty, uh, pretty funny to see that. But they want to keep everything in house. That's that's the key thing here. Lots of fog up here. This is uh, not the worst fog. Not like, you know, north, further northeast fog. Uh, but it is pretty interesting. Slows down significantly for this turn. A little bit of an acceleration. Good job handling it. And it wants to get here. So we're here. We're at our destination. Didn't take quite take me door to door. That's okay. I'll take myself. Got the blinkers on all kinds of ways. Looking like a madman. Okay. So this um, is FSD beta 10.69.25.1. Still a work in progress, very much so. Much better than the last build, 10.69.25. And, uh, you know, we basically go from there. We figure out what the next version is. The next version should be uh, 10.69, excuse me, it should be uh, version 11, I should say, uh, which is being tested internally right now. And once they get that worked out, everybody should be on version 11. But I like the idea that Tesla is bringing the FSD features uh, to um, bringing the FSD features up to parity with the main branch. Uh, my theory, our theory is that they should actually decouple FSD beta. It should be its own software update, just the same way that map data is its own software update. You get separate map data information, regardless of the build that you're on, and it gets updated as necessary. Uh, I would love for the main build to be the main build and you get updates for map data and you get updates for FSD beta separately. That way, everybody can always be on the same build. And whether you opt into if you opt into FSD beta, right, you just get those updates. In addition, if you don't opt into it, you just get the regular build. And that should make us that should simplify the process and make it a lot easier as opposed to having different branches for FSD beta build with the new features versus the main branch build without FSD beta features, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so that's my, my take on that. I really wish they would implement something like that. And maybe they're going towards that with version 11. Um, for those that are asking who are saying, hey, I got so many strikes and they kicked me out and didn't say I was paying attention or whatever the case may be. Um, they do intend to reset the strikes uh, with version 11 and they make they do plan to relax the camera cabin, excuse me, the cabin camera um, in version 11, in addition to giving certain users I guess high usage users for FSD beta, the ability to turn off the steering wheel nag. Um, I think that's a good idea, depending on what that threshold is, what that what that number is. Um, people who've had it the longest, people who have the most miles driven on it, really, really just depends. I think it should be um, either or. If your eyes are paying attention to the road, there should be no steering wheel nag. If your eyes are off the road, there should be a steering wheel nag right to keep you to keep you focused so if you plan on doing something you know playing with your phone not playing with your phone but moving your phone adjusting something grabbing something to drink have your hand on the yoke or the wheel and that'll be the primary method for which you're you're based you're judged based on paying attention and if you have nothing that you're doing and you're just paying attention to the road you can take your hands off the wheel or the yoke uh, and then allow it to uh, to monitor your eyes to see if you're attentive. I think that's the better way to do it. That way it keeps you safe and it makes sure that you're paying attention at all times. And if you do take your hand, your eyes off the road for whatever reason, nav modifying the navigation or whatever, your safety net is having your hand on the yoke or the wheel. Uh, and that's going to be what you're, what you're judged on. So I would love for them to have that sort of uh, uh, redundancy there where it's either or not both. Right now it's both. You have to have your hand on the wheel and you have to have your eyes paying attention to the road, uh, which can be uh, a little uncomfortable, meaning you're, you're spending more energy monitoring and keeping FSD compliant than you would be as you, at regular driving. And then it's like, it defeats the purpose. You might as well just be driving. All right, so this, this drive was pretty good. I'm not gonna actually give it a score per se. I just wanted to test it out to see what it would do in this foggy conditions. I wanna just basically use the scores just for ideal conditions. Obviously, this is anomalous. Uh, it doesn't happen every day here. So I wanna make sure that uh, you know we're fair when we do our ratings. I don't wanna judge this one or give it a better or worse score than something else 
uh, if, in fact, uh, these conditions are not the same all the time. So um, just a quick drive in the fog to see how it does, talk about ultrasonic sensors, and that's that. All right, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about FSD beta now that it's gone wide. Did you get it? Do you like it? Did you get some strikes? Um, do you think you're on your last strike? Uh, what are your experiences with that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.